Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. All right, folks, we're back with you, and I'm glad everybody's tuning in. I'm excited to know in to have this world-renowned songwriter. He has wrote song after song after song for George Strait, Tim McGraw, Blake Shelton. The list goes on and on. If that ain't country, I know y'all know that. Cowboys like us, and I, and I could go on and on, but I'm not. I'm going to introduce him, Mr. Anthony Smith. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. I've been keeping up with you. We got Zoe Yeoman on here. She's co-hosting with us. We're glad she joined in with us this morning. But uh, anyway, I have been a fan of your. Did not realize how long I have been a fan of yours because you actually wrote the song "Infinity" for Don Williams. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, one of this uh, one of the last songs he recorded, I think, and uh, did a great job on it too. Yeah, Don is like, man, he rocks. I mean, he don't rock. He is country as they get and dry as they come, but he has got the best voice and songs out there. Now, is that one of the first songs that you actually had cut, or did you have some before that? No, this, this, uh, that was just a few years ago, uh, probably um, seven years ago when he cut that. Right. It was one of his last uh, last things. But my, my first cut was on, uh, on a major artist was on uh, – Lone Star, there was right. a song called About You, and that was around 2000, I think. Wow. So, Man, I'll yeah. tell you, what a career you had. If you have wrote with uh, George Strait, Tim McGraw, and all that uh, that you've got going on, let me ask you something. You know, your music uh, that you have wrote, of course, you got Chrome. You did Chrome, too, right? Uh-huh. Uh, your songs are, they connect with people, I believe. And, you know, now the music that's coming out of Nashville is kind of more of a poppy style country. Is that hurting you or how many of you? Um, well, it doesn't really hurt me because uh, I, I write everything, you know. Uh, but it it's, uh, I mean, there's not quite as much diversity on mainstream radio as there used to be. Um, so, I mean, lots of people, you know, they want to tune into uh, a country station. They want to hear a country song. Right. And it's, you know, it's not a, uh, w- without having some of that, uh, you know, you, there was room for pop country, rock country, and traditional country, and outlaw and all that. And uh, growing up, I mean, that's the way it was. We had the pop side with, uh, you know, Kenny Rogers and, mm-hmm. um, and Ronnie Millsap and people like that and Dolly. But then you had the country side with Randy Travis and Keith uh keith whitley and mm-hmm. folks like that so and then you had the bluegrass side you had people like ricky skaggs who was hot when i was a kid mm-hmm. you know so you were covering all the bases but now it's not quite as much uh, country in there as, as i would like to see but i like all of it i i i, I write all of it and um, there's room for everything i think well i don't know i, I... I'm kind of, I like the country and the outlaw country style stuff. You know, I know this red dirt movement is taking a big thing out from Texas right now, which is uh, got some pretty cool stuff on that. Uh, but now you do a live show every week on YouTube and I, I mean on Facebook and I, I'm glued to that. You actually told me the story of infinity, how you wrote that song, which I love the history of the songs, how they come up. Uh, but I thought well, the funny thing I was watching, I think it was last night you were talking about how these people will ask you if you lived your songs yeah and i don't i thought to myself gosh if these guys live these songs they'd be dead there's no way they can keep going you know <laughs> right but uh yeah. can i get a little bit on the song i'm trying i mean that was one of the i mean that was a cool song i'm trying can you can you give us a little history on how that come about that song came about um i was writing with uh, a guy by the name of chris wallen mm-hmm. we had a song uh uh probably 50% of it done or more. And I uh, had a friend of mine, uh, Jeffrey Steele, who's an amazing writer. Uh, he came in and, um, and we finished it. And the song was, uh, I think it was a song called three seconds. And it was, uh, we wrote it, ended up getting cut with uh, um, Sammy Kershaw and uh, Laurie Morgan. Mm-hmm. And uh, but that same session, as soon as we finished that thing up, which was in no time, just a few minutes, and uh, then we, Jeffrey had an idea called I'm Trying. And um, I tinkered around, come up with this melody thing, an intro to the song. And um, we ended up writing the, the, the rest of it that day. So we get both those songs went and got cut. You know, we wrote them both in just a few hours. And 
generally I'm a slow writer. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, now do you but find that, the, I, the songs that come out quick, do you find that they're a little better than the ones that you struggle with? You know, I mean, I, you got, I mean, you wrote Christopherson, right? Yeah. Um, no, I don't necessarily think that. I think that it just, it's all about the crafting. Some mm -hmm. things, things that come faster are generally things that are more inspired uh, in that. So it's easier for you, but um but sometimes crafting a song may take two or three sessions and, uh, you know, and those may turn out to be uh, worth it, the, the time that you put in it. Um, so you just never know. Yeah. You just never know. Yeah, I know like Christopherson, I'm a huge fan of his, and you probably know him personally, you know, but I got to hang out with him for a little bit and ask him about the Loving Her Was Easier. He said it took him over a year to write that song. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's just, just making it right is what matters, and, and uh, I, I, I'm a slower writer than most, I think, because I, I, I maybe overanalyze. Right. <laughs> you know? But, uh, but I enjoy the process. So, Alyssa, definitely a talent, man. I mean, just like that Infinity song, man. To me, that's just like art. I mean, that would be just like Beethoven. Um, Beethoven. That's another artist, ain't it? I get them all mixed up. But uh, I mean, that's just something that that you just hang out with. You know, it just stays and stays and stays. I think the slower songs stay around longer than the than the fast songs. I don't know. I think they got more road miles. Yeah. And uh, but now, do you like to co-ride or do you like to ride on your own? Um, I like both. I like uh, depending on the co-rider. You know, um, if, if I enjoy being with them, um, some people are just, uh, the, it's just the chemistry with everyone, you know, it's like any relationship and, uh, some people you may not have a personal chemistry with, but you have a creative chemistry with, um, I know there's people who don't even like each other, but they write great songs and mm -hmm. it's just, uh, it's a business decision to continue to, to write together, you know, and, um, uh, uh, but yeah, I generally don't, don't, uh, uh, write with people that I don't feel have a good time with, you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, but I like writing by myself as well. You know, sometimes I'll get a crazy idea that, that nobody else gets, you know, infinity mm -hmm. would have been one of those. Uh, if you read the lyrics to that song, that would be, uh, or one called, uh, who invented the wheel or yeah. up to the they're really strange concept songs. And I know that sometimes you'll play the idea for a, uh, for another songwriter and they just don't get it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but once they hear it later after you went and finished it, they're like, Oh my God, I love that. You know, they just hear it out of the context, you know? Um, I think it's kind of funny what John Prine said. He was co-writing with this guy and he, they were writing this song. And he said, I was sitting there writing this song. And he said, I was thinking about my wife. And then I was thinking, I hope that he wasn't. So, <laughs> Zoe, you got anything you want to chime in on? Well, Anthony, I just, I love Run. I think that's just such a beautiful song. I love it a lot. Um, but I also love your, your, uh, your Instagram account is amazing. And that's oh. all you, isn't it? Yeah. You do all I, of that. Well, I do all of that, but I'm not, I'm so I'm, I really need to learn social media skills and how to, uh, I'm just doing the Facebook live thing on Wednesday nights because I don't know how to do some of the other stuff. I gotta, I've got to get somebody to help me with, uh, get some videos out and that. So I, I, think you think do, I, think you, I think you do a brilliant job. I was going through it and I was like, wow, this is really impressive that you're well, not like can you handle this for me? Like you're doing it yourself. You know, I love the, the photograph with you and uh, your wife and uh, McCartney and yeah. you call her Mac. Yeah. She's, that's my, that's uh, her mom. She's my ex, but we're really good friends. And, uh, but uh, yeah, we call it, we call her uh, Mac for short for McCartney, but um, oh God, she's my, she's my world. <laughs> yeah. She's adorable. You know, the first thing when I, I, when I read Mac, I thought of Mac Davis. I was like, oh, Mac Davis. No, you know, whatever. Mac, yeah. Mac, it's cute. It's a f cool name for a gal and a cool name, you know, for a guy too, right? So. Well, you know, when we first named her McCartney, um, she was the first girl ever named McCartney. And we couldn't believe that. We did the research through all of the uh, child names and stuff like that. And it, it was never, had never been registered. And uh, we went through social media, couldn't find it. And, 
And I was surprised as heck because I just assumed that people would have named, uh, you know, used the last name as a first name. But we had a television yeah. that uh, that aired for a full season um, on Access, and uh, it went from one year of, of, of twelve. Yeah, it's funny. Very cool. Very cool. Now he was a pretty prolific songwriter. Is that why? Or, or oh yeah, of course, yeah, because okay. he's a, he's a considered, I guess, the the most successful songwriter of all time. Uh, I even though I'm and I, I'm a huge huge fan. I also, like he was talking, I'm a huge Christopherson fan as well. Yeah. Yes. There's no doubt, man. There's no doubt. You know, that's funny. You know, I got to talk to Chris Christopherson. He said that uh, out of everything he's ever accomplished, being an Army Ranger, he was more proud of that than anything. That's pretty cool, ain't it? So let me <laughs> ask you something, uh, Anthony. And then we're talking to Anthony Smith. Go to anthonysmith.com. That'll lead you to all his Facebook and the whole nine yards. You can check him out. I mean, like I said, a writer. He's, you've listened to his music over and over again. This is where it comes from. Uh I know growing up, you're like me, you listen to all these people on the radio, but now you are around these people. I mean, how does that feel to get to hang out with some of your heroes? Um, it, you know, it's, uh, it's surprising how normal that it is when you're around those people and you become friends with them. They're just like everyone else, yeah. you know, um, there's good and there's bad and they're, you know, they, they've got personalities and, um, and, uh, you know, uh, ticks like everyone oh yeah 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 you know, but uh but yeah it's it's but it's just at the same time it's an honor i remember the first time i was around uh christopherson that you're talking about he uh he was amazing he was the coolest guy he was everything i thought he would be um super approachable you know and uh and most of them are most mm -hmm. of the country acts are like that you right. know but now, you know, like I say, a lot of these songwriters like you don't get known because all the songs are cut by other people. Now, you're in the process of fixing to start touring. Are you not fixing to start getting out on the road and doing some stuff? Uh, yeah, I've always toured. I had, you know, I had, when I had my record deal, I had a few hits of my own. And uh, I've toured ever since, you know, so I do a lot of shows and uh, I, I love it, you know. Um, and I produce some records here and uh, stuff like that and keeps me pretty busy yeah that's good but now the covid shut everything down so have you wrote like hundreds of songs and ready to go <laughs> it, you know, um it shut me down on in 2020 um and then 2021 was just huge i did so many shows in 21 that it was crazy right i'm hoping 22 is the same way you know I'm with you, man. I mean, you know, there's a lot of venues that has gone because of the COVID, and it's sad. To, it's sad to know that. But then a lot of the venues I know, you know, like you and other people are booking some stuff, and there's not really filling up because people are worried about COVID. But I really feel like it's behind us right now. I think people are ready to go uh, and get out and, and enjoy some music and, and this, that, and other. Like I said, we're talking to Anthony Smith, anthonysmith.com. And, uh, but, uh, you know, your talent, at what age did you realize that, hey, I want to be a songwriter? gosh you know it's hard to explain to people that when i tell them this is all i've ever wanted to do i, I it's literal um i started playing guitar when i was about six years old and uh because dad and mom and dad always had guitars laying around and and i just naturally gravitated toward it i don't know why but um but i was writing melodies by the time i was eight years old i wow. was just in the acoustic uh, it crossed the house and showing mom my this melody I came up with. And, uh, you know, she was very supportive, her and dad both. And um, then I uh, I wasn't my first lyric. I was 15 when I wrote the first lyric. And it was a, it was a gospel song. Mm -hmm. And I played, you know, in church and I played it that Sunday. The church um, loved it, you know, which right. was very encouraging. And so I wrote a lot of gospel songs and then uh, eventually you know, uh, country and rock and stuff like that. Yeah. That's amazing. I knew that's the thing. Most, that's most musicians come out of church somewhere. Everybody I've ever taught. Well, I started in church, you know, and that's kind of where it always goes. But uh, Anthony, we've about got to wrap this thing up a little bit. Uh, these folks, like I said, it's anthonysmith.com. You can check him out. Uh, every Wednesday night, what time do you do the uh, Facebook live? 
Um, I do a six o'clock central every Wednesday night and, uh, you can find me, I'm going to probably start doing YouTube and, um, Instagram both as well. Uh, but, uh, you can find me on Instagram at Anthony Smith, um, HQ. Um, and, uh, I'll probably start doing that as well, but yeah, come in soon. If you need some help with the Instagram, just let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it. It's super simple. All right. I Keep will... doing stuff yourself because it's so genuine and it's so clearly you. Yeah. And that's the thing that matters. Oh, well, thank you for that. Yes. Send me your information. I'll be calling you up. <laughs> <laughs> I will do it. I will do it. I'll message you. I'll you DM go. you as they say. There you the go. Fellers, we appreciate you very much. Thank you, Anthony Smith. And like I said, big fans. And uh, we'll be following you. We have got to get to a break. And like I said, thank you again. All right. Thank you nice so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you for spending a little time with us. And remember, you can tune in every morning at WJULradio.com at 8 a.m. Eastern. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, The Morning Dish.